All right, what's up, YouTube? This is Fossil Fool Paul Friedman with an adventure video for you in the first mod, the 17-foot stitch and glue boat that I built using plans downloaded from Ross Lilystone for the first mate. Customized it, modified it, scaled it up, created this sailing, rowing, and motoring dinghy that is capable of getting out into the Pacific Ocean, which I've now dabbled in quite a few times. And this time we decided to launch from Monterey, a uh, mecca of aquatic life on the Pacific coast. And we were excited to be there because there were a lot of reports of whales migrating south and we wanted to see them. We wanted to see their spouts. We wanted to see their majesty. And what we ended up finding was something a little different, but it was very magical. I'm going to let it unfold for you. You're going to experience it as we experienced it. I hope you like this type of thing. If you do, please um, engage with me in the, in the stuff down there, the liking, subscribing, commenting. Let me know if you've seen these types of animals that we ran into and what's been your experience with whale watching in small boats. This trip required uh, a 100 plus mile drive from Oakland, making it less ecological. And because of the higher footprint of the trip, I feel even more motivated to make this YouTube video to extend the impact and hopefully share this feeling, make more people inspired uh, in the way that we were. So when we began recording the footage, we were already out uh, had already been sailing for one or two hours without seeing very much that day, and then we spotted the fins. I think they're porpoises. Oh, that's great. No, they're orcas. Look at the white. Oh no, they're little. They're not. What is that? There's some kind of. Be a little purpose for so much light. We did find out that these are called Rizzo's dolphins. They glow underwater with their light coloration. The older the animal, the whiter it is. They're not killer whales. No. They have a snub nose and they're going so slow. Yeah. There's the tiniest whale I've ever seen. The pleasure of sailing along this creature, swimming in such a relaxed, low power state, and not knowing what they are for minutes on end. And these animals must have known that we were there. They simply did not perceive us as a threat. This is clearly a cruising speed that they could keep up for a very long time. Being under sail with no motor noise was helpful to establishing the comfort level that they had around us. Thanks. So beautiful. They're so beautiful. Wow. Four of them. Nice job, Captain. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's fantastic. And in this clip, you can see fins in the distance and spouts in the distance. There's clearly some, maybe 10 or 20 more of the same animals off in the distance, uh, another 100 yards out. Yes, 
I, I see a whole bunch more. Wow. What are those? Are they different or are they the same? They're coming right for this pod. I think they're the same species. That looks like about the same size. Maybe they're it's like a they're family members and they're fishing together or something. We were experiencing an amazing bit of beginner's luck in this adventure footage. I had no training and no experience trying to sail alongside marine life. And we just happened to get it right in the sense that we weren't too close, weren't too far, weren't too fast, weren't too slow, and were able to enjoy these creatures without spooking them. Later in the day, we realized how lucky we were, but because this was the first time encountering them, we were just in the experience. Well done, Captain yeah. Paul. Beautiful, really. First nice. mod delivers. Yeah, Woo! We're not making any noise. Yes. They don't seem really scared of us. Oh, there they are. They're right behind you. There's a whole other pod. Should I attack? Yeah. And let's get a little bit of speed. Well, we came out to Monterey Bay to do some whale watching, Nick and I, and we just saw our first whales of the day. We, 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 were, we were sailing and perfectly matching a, a small group of four. They're very small whales. They don't seem much larger than a dolphin. Pot of six of them. Let's see if we can swim with them again. That was amazing. So the intention is there, we are hoping for the same result. And there they are off in the distance. We're approaching them. They're getting away from us, aren't they? Uh, it was... They don't even seem like they're moving this time until we approach and then they really kick into a power stroke. That was definitely not uh, conservation. Not the way that you're supposed to do it. Not what we want to publish. Oh yeah. Got it, I see what you mean. There's a whole protocol around distance, safety. We were basically on a collision course with them and I didn't fall off. I should have told you to fall off, I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Well, let's go back because they're, I think they're okay. still there. Yeah. Okay, so we just uh, unfortunately were right on course with these whales and I didn't know to uh, correct until it was too late. So we're going to come about and try to catch them again. Ready about? Yep. Attacking. is in the distance and we are basically in the deep water section of Monterey Bay right at the edge of the open ocean and there's our pod of whales this time we're just gonna make sure we don't run up on them let's give them a little space maybe fall off a tiny bit there we go. 
I don't know if they moved closer to us or if I just didn't do it that good, but we ended up pretty close to them again. A little too close again. They went, they're going the other way. If we fuck up their mojo, their strategy of defensiveness, we like yeah. help hurt them. In, like the orcas use us to capture them. And that would be weak sauce. That would be bad. Yeah. Well, we had a really satisfying whale watching. And we had about an hour of sort of like, I don't know, maybe they're gone for the se season before Nick spotted them. Then uh, we had to come back because we were 11 miles out. And now that we're back within a safe range of the boat launch in Monterey, Nick's going to try some free diving. He's got all of his gear here, including a lead belt. And then we've already launched, we've already dropped a crab trap with some venison and some dog food. <laughs> and if that doesn't work, one thing that we could use is um, a little bit of centerboard because I imagine that after dropping you, I'm probably going to want to turn and go back and forth. Yeah, that's good. Wow, that immediately turned the boat when you did that. Really? Yeah, it immediately got the lateral resistance. Interesting. Changed it. Nick's looking like he might do one of these James Bond things where he just falls backwards, right? Possibly, though. The d there's something called the dive reflex that makes you breathe, your heart rate drop mm -hmm. when the water hits your face before your body. And it goes to your parasympathetic nervous response rather than your sympathetic nervous response. And is that Which, desirable? Yeah, because your sympathetic nervous response, your heart rate increases, which consumes your oxygen, decreases your downtime. It's more dangerous to blackouts. You want to you slow your heart rate as much as possible. So going backwards is good for that? No, because well, if you can get your face hitting the water first, it is. But oh, but more like, like, like classic the... scuba diving it doesn't matter because you're you have scoop air tanks. You're not trying to like optimize his efficiency and mm -hmm. oxygen in the lungs. Are you gonna grab these urchins with your bare hands? Oh, I'll, I'll use the the knife to pry them off. And then once they're pried, you can grab them. And I like that I'm seeing some kelp right here. If you could get me to the edge of this kelp, that would be amazing. All right. You see the black heads up there? Oh yeah, look, there's a bunch of sea otters right there. And Nick's gonna enjoy the aquatic life. I'm gonna set a timer. And now you're really seeing the three different modes of propulsion of this modified first mate Ross Lilystone design. And on the cover of the plans it says sail, oars, and outboard. And on this day we used all three. Let's see if I can get a view of one of these otters. And all three are custom creations of my um, composites work. So these are carbon fiber oars painted white so that they don't bend as much on hot days in the sun. Very cute. The oars weigh about two and a half pounds each. Pretty light. I even used a heavy bolt in the handles. How are we doing on time? You think it's time to go? You've been underwater for like 10 minutes. Okay. Maybe 15. Yeah. Do you want to do more? If we... It's pretty magic because the, the sea otters and the sea lions are really curious. They're like, coming up to you? Swim with them underwater is so fun. Do you want to try doing that with my GoPro? The sea otters out in this kelp forest are very curious and fast and checking us out constantly. And this is a, they're keeping this kelp forest very healthy because there are, I haven't seen a single purple urchin. Wow. And all of the diversity of eelgrass and different macroalgae is off, off the charts beautiful. So many fish and mollusks and different 
reef organisms. It's quite stunning. Let's go down and see if we can find something. My legs are starting to cramp up. I'm out of breath. My downtime is terrible. But I had so much fun. Grateful to my friend Paul. He has a beautiful boat, the first mod, for taking us out. It was a great adventure. So grateful for this Pacific Ocean. Wow, what a tremendous life. Put in it. I did so much. Yeah. My legs are starting to cramp. Okay. Do you want to do it yourself or you want a hand? Okay. And why don't you move towards the um, captain's seat and I'll keep rowing. Alright. Wait a second. Not break too much water. Hitting it with a bunch of power just to do this quick little donut to get back to our crab trap float. The pink tape that you're seeing there is to tie a bicycle handlebar to my tiller. It's got some good pickup right now. Because that uh, we are testing a new grip throttle without wireless, which is really good news. Bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. Good. Big moment. Is our luck going to continue? We can find out. They like venison. Looks like we were dropping this in about in about 30 to 50 feet of water and it looks like we put down about 80 feet of weighted line. Is it feeling heavy yet? A little bit. I can't say it's extraordinarily heavy. The crabbing was a bit of a disappointment, but the day overall was a wonderful adventure on Monterey Bay. We're very grateful for the conditions that we had, which were uh, just very easy, mild breezes. And we made our way back in at the end of the day and enjoyed the symphony of sea lions along the jetty at the Monterey boat launch. Some big ones in there and just a little look at their society and um, you can hear that the electric outboard of my own custom lab is generating so little noise. Well that was quite a display of arfiness there, right? And I love the fact that we can hear their sounds over the sound of the motor which is just along here at 
1300 watts. Pretty significant amount of power flowing through our system right now, which is nice. And we're doing four, four or five. So, wonderful day on the water in Monterey Bay. First time doing any sort of boating here. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this adventure. I'll keep on keeping on with the YouTubing, and I'd appreciate it if you helped me along by fiddling with the little things down there. Like, subscribe, comment, pass it to a friend, and check out these adventure videos if you want more.